Jesus says to us. I was praying in this week. You know, Jesus Christ was the Lamb of God that was slain on the cross for us. But he was also the Lion of Judah. And you know, there are times in our lives when we need to take on those characteristics of Christ. We should do that every single day.
gotta keep telling myself. I can't not think it.
Children's Church. A child of 12 and under that would like to go to Children's Church. Welcome to. And, uh, isn't the Lord good? He's worthy, the Bible says, to be praised. In fact, the scripture teaches us to praise Him on high symbols. Praise Him on stringed instruments. After it mentions everything to praise Him on, it says, Now I've done everything that has breath. Praise Him. I appreciate what the Lord is doing. If you're a visitor here at Redemption Harvest this morning, we welcome you. To the book of Mark, St. Mark's Gospel, chapter number 10. In the words of every preacher that ever got to a stage, I won't keep you long. I started not to preach, I just started to just allow the Holy Ghost to keep on singing. And that through the singers, and I feel like the Lord wants me to switch gears. I have no notes this morning except what's written in this book. And, uh, early this morning I was awakened out of my sleep and I heard the word, these words and I want to just allude to it quickly. How many will help me preach this morning? Oh. Maybe somebody here I can help. Sometimes you have to encourage the saints. Amen. Mark chapter 10, we're going to pick up at verse 23. Let me just share with you what, what's taking place here in this chapter before you start reading. Jesus has got a crowd together. They've asked him about the bill of divorcement, of Moses' bill of divorcement. And then he pulls the children and set them on, on his lap. He says to them, Suffer the little children come to me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. And then, in the midst of all of that, the Bible calls this man a rich young ruler. He comes to Jesus with great riches and he says, what can I do to inherit eternal life? Which leads me to believe that he had not worked for anything he had. He was used to inheritance. Anybody with me? So what can I now that I've got all these riches, what can I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, keep the commandments. And he said, I've done that since my youth. I don't kill I don't commit adultery, I don't steal, I don't bear false witness, and I honor my father and my mother. That's the ones he quoted. Jesus said to him, one thing you lack, go thy way, sell everything you have, and give it to the poor, and you'll have treasure in heaven. The Bible said that rich, that rich young man walked away very sad and grieved. Because he had great riches. He would not give up this world to inherit eternal life. And I want to pick up on verse 23. Jesus looked about, round about, and said unto his disciples, How hard shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? The disciples were astonished at his words, but Jesus answered again and said unto them, Children, how hard is it? For them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. They were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? Jesus, looking upon them, said, With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. Then Peter began to say, Lo, we have left all have followed thee. Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house, brother, sisters, father, mother, wife, children, lands, for my sake and for the gospels. But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brothers, sisters, mothers, 
children, lands, with persecutions and in the world to come eternal life. But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. In essence, this is what Jesus was saying. In everything you gave up to follow me, you're going to gain a lot more than you gave up. I've gained more than what I gave up. Let me say it again. I've gained more than what I gave up. This morning I was thinking about my own, just my own personal life. How far the Lord has brought me. I was saved at an early age. I was almost, I guess, 18 years of age. It was March the 30th, 1986. I was raised in a, in a broken home, as you all know. And uh, March the 30th, I walked in on a Sunday morning, Easter Sunday morning. I was invited by, by my Aunt Pat to come to church. I had been out on for the last three days drinking, drugging it. Stumbled into my mother's house. I, I don't know how I'm trying to help this morning, but I'm going to. I stumbled into my mother's house. She was going to work that Sunday morning when I came home. I fell in the front door and crawled to the couch. Brother Andy Lee and I made my way up on the couch. Rachel got the TV remote and turned the TV on. I didn't know anything about God and I didn't know anything about really about preachers. I didn't even know who this guy was. But when I turned the TV on, uh, Jimmy Swagger was on TV. 1986. And he was sitting at a piano and he started playing the chords on the piano and he was, sing he was singing the song, Born Again, there's really been a change in me. Born again just like Jesus said. Born again all because of Calvary. I'm so glad that I've been born again. And he kept singing that chorus over and over again. The more he sung it, Brother Ricky, is the more that I started feeling. So I didn't know what it was. And then he walked from the piano to the platform and opened his Bible. And I never will forget, he preached on Mark chapter 5. And his thought was living among the tombs. He used the, the, the man of Gadara that was possessed with 2,000 demons. Yeah. And he preached that I didn't have to live among the tombs anymore. I could have life. And the more he preached, even though I didn't understand about this God that loved me, I was... I came up in church at an early age up to the time I was nine we went to church but every preacher that I'd ever heard preach always told me that God was angry at me and upset at me and he had me clubbed and ready to knock me in the head and I was going to stand in judgment one day for all the sin I committed and uh, rightfully so maybe as a sinner I would but the reality is that's not true at all in the essence of who God is God is love. Yeah. Help me right now. I said He is love. And the real message was that God loved me. Can I quote to you John 3 and verse number 16? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever, that was me and you, would believe in Him, we could have eternal life. Amen. And for the first time, when Brother Swaggart started preaching, I felt something grip my heart. I didn't know what it was, and I rode off of that couch. The phone was ringing. I answered the phone, and my aunt Pat said, "Why don't you go to church with me this morning?" I said, "I, I don't want to go." And she said, "Come on, I'm your favorite aunt. I don't ask you to do much. It's Easter Sunday morning. Go with me." So I told her, "I said I'll be there." Where's the night? She told me where the church was, and I came. But that morning, sitting in a pew, that man of God got up and he started preaching. And he told me about a God that loved me. He said he's not mad at me. He's not angry at me. He's not chasing me down. There in that pew with uh, alcohol on my breath and powder in my nose with drugs in my body. 
It wasn't nobody following my ministry at that time. Sister Kathy, I went to school with her. She found out that I got saved. She said, God, if God can save that guy, he can save anybody. I got to go see him. I got to go hear him preach. This is a fluke. Something's wrong. They came. Her and Brother Tom. Brother Tom, they was dating at the time. Uh, I, that's a long story. They were dating at the time. They came to my church. I got out and they heard me preach. They got saved. They got right with the Lord. Come on, somebody. Help me right now. And they become friends. First friends I ever had. And I'm talking about true friends in the church. 33 years later, he's still with me. She's still with me. Come on, somebody. God will give you better than what you ever gave up. Jesus. Right. You, you, no, you didn't hear it. Who's always been there? Jesus. Amen. Amen. Who's always been there? Jesus. Amen. Who's always been there? Jesus. Amen. Who's always been there? Jesus. Amen. Who's always been there? Jes
always been there. Jesus. You hear me? When I look around me and there ain't nobody around me and I'm I, I, I wet in my pillow with tears in my eyes. Do you know that God I'm serving has never talked bad about me? I said he's never spread a rumor about me. He's never put me down. He's never even brought up my sin. In fact, he's, he cast it as far as the east to the west to never be brought before me again. He chooses to forget what oh, I've done wrong. Hey, come on. Can I tell you this? You may have a fallen out with me and remember it forever. But according to that Bible, when I got up this morning, his mercy was
He says to act. He says to make yourself unto the Lord. Yes, Listen to me this morning. The word of the Lord is going out and it will not return void. And he says to you this morning, submit yourself unto me. Look into my authority.
something that is eternal, oh, that yes. greater is He that's within you than He that is in the world. But here's the sad thing. Are you going to sit there this morning and walk right out that door sorrowful because you didn't receive what Jesus said because right, Jesus right, said, right. if you're going to follow me, go sell everything that you've got. And it all is nothing. It's either all or nothing. here this morning. I felt led to touch two men this morning. Chains have been broken. Lives have been changed. I'm going to tell you something, my friend. It's not going to come easy. You've got to fight for it. That's why Paul said at the end of his life, I fought a good fight. Oh, yes. I can't think that we're dear to me. Can I tell you this morning? You've got power in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. I, 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 it's got to go here. Yeah, I don't care if it, if it goes on video. I don't care. But what I do care is about your soul this morning. Yes. Yes. I want to tell you, I've already been to one service. And I want you to share, I want to share with you what the preacher said. Anybody know about how the Nehemiah's heart was broken about some walls that were torn out and some gates that were burnt? Guess what you are? You are gates. You are walls. And the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence. Yes. A wall says you got to have permission to come in here. You know what's happening with us? We've got so relaxed in the Lord that our walls have been torn down in anything and everything because I don't know how many of you, shame on me, was down at the gay pride and should have been there, lifting up the name of Jesus. Put the law up and says it's wrong. I know. They probably going to come get you. Preacher, that's all right. I'll stand for Jesus and let the world go on. Amen. That's no problem with what I just said. But you know what? I'm a peculiar person because of Jesus. And I believe this morning God's speaking to your heart. And God is saying there's something that you're holding on to that is keeping you from my glory. Don't be like the, the old guy painting. Walk away. And I think it's amazing. And I promise you, I'm going to trust I'm not going to get out of the way. But can I stand here? And if you need prayer for your mind, if you need somebody to take some Holy Ghost and water, Amen. and that which is cracked in your life, Amen. that which is, has a hole in it in your life, you come to church and get filled up and runs out. There's a name of God in here that you ain't a husband, you ain't a man of God, you profess that you are, but you're not. You're not prophets, you're not priests, and you're not kings of your home. You know why I'm where I'm at today? Because I told the devil that's the last time you have no more permission to come into this house. Even though I'm going to be a prophet, I'm going to be a king, and I'm going to be a priest, and I'm going to be a friend. Amen. That's all I got to say. But I'm telling you, we're some, we're some messed up folks. And we need a touch from Jesus this morning. And I believe in impartation because in the times that I could have quit, would have quit. The man of God loved me so much. And I don't love him because he loved me. But I love him because he stood. And there's been walls and there's been doors in my life that he has rebuilt through the word of God. I'm going to talk to somebody. Come on. Come on. This thing. As they say, if you need to pray, come on.
the Lord at any time. If you've never been in a service where preachers tag team, I was in one one time where there was 11 of us tag team. And uh, nobody even knew we were, I mean, just the one that got the one the first guy got to preach, he just walked over here to the microphone, and the second one he come, come up off the pew. It went 11 through 11 preachers in the church. And, uh, got, and, and they just picked up right where the other guy left off. It was just so anointed. And I appreciate Brother Andy following the Lord this morning. God's good. Amen. Yeah. We are going to have something special happen tonight. Um, yesterday I was sitting and I felt like the Lord spoke to me about having a man come and sing tonight. And uh, so he will be here. His name is Larry Burroughs. Larry will be here tonight to sing a couple of songs for us. We're going to be blessed. Good, young, anointed man. I say young, he's probably... I guess he's close to my age. He's the only one that's going to go, guys. So uh, he'll be here tonight. And uh, youth will say, and then they'll sing. So, uh, so we want you to come and be a part of that. And then somebody will preach. And uh, we'll see what the Lord does. Who knows? He may have three or four other guys preaching. So, so I'm going to let Brother Terry come and dismiss the service of prayer. Then we want to go to the back door and I want to shake your hand before we leave. So. God, we thank you, Lord, for this service, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your forgiving grace. We thank you, Lord, for watching over us. God, we thank you, Lord, for always being there, God. And God, I pray, Lord, that we look unto you always. Father, we get in your word and, and learn more about you. And Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.